Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing a sheet of the Canson Moulin, Moulin du Roy uh, Rough Press 140 pound watercolor paper. This is a really nice rough textured watercolor paper but it does require a little bit of prep work. Prep work. Um, so this white sheet here is completely untreated straight out of the package. I just cut it down to size um, and I'm just doing a quick quick brush stroke across it and it's a fairly wet brush stroke so it's not like I'm trying to do a dry brush so you can see that it just kind of repels the paint and the water completely untreated um, whereas this sheet I had soaked this sheet of paper overnight in a tub of water let it dry completely um, and went in with some other color and now I'm going in and using about the same amount of paint on my brush my same amount of water and you can tell that it's kind of absorbing into the paper a lot easier um, so this paper is really durable. You can do a lot of layering with it, um, as you'll see later in the video, because I'm going to kind of jump to a painting video of me working with this paper here in a second. But just side by side, untreated versus treated, you can really tell the difference of how that water and the paint really just kind of is repelling off the paper. It's not really soaking in. So this that's nice for like quick dry te brush texture but it's not the best for a whole painting um, so here this is a recent piece of mine um, called winter musings that I did um, I've been challenging myself lately to do kind of monochromatic painting scapes doing a little bit more of abstract ish paintings um, and using just a single color while I'm working so this sheet, again, like the other one, I had pre-soaked this overnight and let it dry completely before I started working on it. One thing I have found that is helpful with this is when you're going into a new painting is to lightly mist your prepped paper with a spray bottle of water just to kind of reactivate the fibers and allow for a little bit more absorption depending on what you're looking for. Um, so I did that for that background and did a, quite, quite a few layers. So I'm already on my like fourth or fifth layer of paint at this point, um, what you're seeing now. Um, and you can see that I'm working vertically, which is not something I typically do with watercolors at all. And the reason I'm doing that is because, I'm again, I'm testing this paper out. I'm really seeing how it holds up to an extreme vertical. And it does a pretty good job. So it has that kind of repelling quality to it which has actually been quite helpful for certain effects because as you can see I'm working with it it takes a good amount of water and a good amount of paint before it really starts to drip down the page um, and for this painting I like the effect of that drip I really really wanted that to happen but you can see kind of right by where my hand is um, a little below there's just like a glob of paint that's just hanging out there so it's not going all the way down the paper um, and while my painting isn't completely vertical it's pretty steep and so having that surface tension on the paper has actually been kind of nice compared to other papers I've used so it really allows me to do more precise brush strokes um, and really kind of keep the paint where I want it on this one also because of how thick the paper is it kind of has this nice absorption of water where it holds onto the water pretty nicely you can work a layer for quite a bit but it also dries fairly quickly i feel like um because the paper is a very hearty hearty cotton so you can kind of rework a layer a couple of times while it's still wet but it's not like soaking wet if that makes sense um because i i do tend to work with a lot of water on my brush and a lot of water on my paper and with some of my other watercolor papers if i were trying to do this technique um it would stay pretty soaking and buckle a little bit more than i'd like i mean i always i know with watercolor paper it's always going to buckle just a little bit um so what i end up doing after i finish a painting is i usually end up lightly ironing it with just like a clothing iron and a rag on top of it to help crisp up the edges again and unbuckle it a tiny bit but um but here i'm using a mix of watercolor and gouache so right now i'm going in with a white gouache 
and I'm just kind of pre-wetting areas where I want things to drip down a little bit more and let it kind of flow. Um, but the nice thing I've noticed about this paper is that even though I'm working, again, very, very stiff, very, not very stiff, <laughs> very vertical, um, very steep angle, it's, it's slowly dripping down. Like, the gradation over there is very subtle. It's not... It's not going super duper fast, and that's really nice and re a little refreshing, actually. Um, so I feel like, especially with this kind of paper, you can do a little bit more play with it, um, and you can really work it a lot, and it's not going to completely disrupt the layers underneath. So it, once the layers are in there, they hold on pretty nicely. So even when I'm going in with a very wet brush, I'm not really disturbing the under layers in the same way um, some of the other watercolor papers I've used in the past have done. And I'll review some of my other papers here in more videos, but but I've been really enjoying the, the hardiness of this paper and like the ability to really overwork it and not be afraid of the fibers of the paper kind of coming through. Um, so kind of like if you use lower quality watercolor paper if it gets super wet you kind of notice that the fibers kind of start to pill up almost like on an old sweater and they kind of catch the pigment in a weird way i'm not getting that at all with this paper which is really kind of nice um and it's with this particular one it is a white paper it's not a bright white not quite as bluish as like a printer paper would be so it still has a tiny bit of warmth to it but it's not as off-white as, say, um, B Paper's 100% Cotton Rag is. Uh, um, yeah. So here we're going in. I've done a few more layers on this painting. I'm just going in with a little bit of white gouache and here you can kind of see the texture of the paper a little more clearly and how the individual strokes are showing up on the paper. But overall, this paper has been really, really nice to work with. It did have a quite a bit of a learning curve. Um, if you want to see a painting on this paper from very start to very finish, um, the um, ah, my previous video uh, which is in red and gold and white, um, which I'll link in the description below and link somewhere up on the screen, really showcases the paper from its natural state into the final form the whole way through. But I feel like this is a really good paper for when you want the texture to, throw, to show through. It is a rough press, so it's really good for kind of quick movements. It's good for less precise details. Um, if you're going for more of a detailed painting, I would probably use maybe hot press or a cold press. Um, but either way, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you next time. Here's the completed painting. Again, this one is called Winter Musings, and I do have prints available of this on my website.